fatal parking garage collapse occurred in New York City this week that also injured a half a dozen people. We will look at the available video evidence collected so far to try to determine what caused this fatal parking garage collapse. And we'll show you why there are now renewed fears of other potential parking garage collapses. So our search takes us from Florida all the way over to Manhattan in New York City. This is in Lower Manhattan to 57 Ann Street. And I'm just going to set the stage here for you to let you know where this is. So we're over here is where the parking garage is located. And right over here, as you can see, that's the World Trade Center. That's the ground zero. And then, of course, over here is all of the financial district here, the New York Stock Exchange and everything. So everything's right in here and it's right next door to Pace University. On April 18th, 2023, this Ann Street garage caved in. Some reports said that it caved in from the roof down. Other reports said that it caved in from a lower floor down, but we don't know for sure. None of these people really knows either. I want to show you this ring security cam video that was shot from inside of a car in the garage as it happened. Now this was likely one of those ring stick up cams that was inside somebody's vehicle and this might have even been a police car. But let's take a look at this video and listen to the audio too. Now I want to take another look again at this ring video here in slow motion and here you can see it's starting to just now come down and the lights in the foreground have already gone off but that you can see that one fluorescent light still over there by the ramp is still going. Now the daylight is starting to creep in on both sides both on the left and the right side of where everything is falling. So I'm thinking that we're probably on the third level here off the ground and that's probably peeking up into the sky into the roof. Now, they didn't tell us what floor that this happened on, but it looks to me like it might have been an upper floor because if you look over here, see where these fluorescent lights are, this looks like it's a ramp going down to me. So this is likely going to be on the second or third floor is my guess. And then if you look at some other observations, look how they have these cars just parked anywhere. Look at this double parked over here. They're crammed like sardines in a can just everywhere. Very little room to get through except just to drive a car right through the driveway here and down the ramp. So I'm wondering if overloading is going to play a key in in this investigation here. All right, now check this out. This is the fire department's first usage of this new robot Dalmatian dog that they sent in to investigate because the building was too dangerous to send it personnel inside. So here he is trying to climb in. Boom, oops. You can see right there he fell over. Dead dog. Okay, so there's four potential contributing root causes here to this New York City garage collapse. Contributing factor number one would be the age of the building. So if we go back in the records and look here, it looks like the building was first built in 1925. So it's about a hundred years old. Now, a lot of news agencies are reporting this incorrectly. They're saying that the building was built in 1957 or because that's apparently when it got the certificate of occupancy, but that's a whole different ball game there. And so here is the certificate of occupancy and there you can see right here, I see March 15th, 1957. Now here's an interesting thing about it. This is a five story building. There is one floor underground and the cellar and then there's a first second and third floor above ground and then there's the roof floor that is above ground so there's four levels above ground and one level underground so the question is did this parking garage in new york city just collapse due to old age was that a contributing factor or were there other factors and contributing factor number two to this new york city garage collapse would be the rating of this building and is it rated to handle the amount of cars that were parked there was it overloaded with vehicles at the time of the collapse now now, if you look here, it says that on every one of these floors, garage is for more than five each motor vehicles on each story. So that's kind of vague. It's not really saying, well, you have a maximum number of cars you can park there or uh, even a weight limit like you would see on the on the roads or bridges with a, a load limit sign, which of course nobody ever pays attention to. We really don't know back in that day, you know, what was the average weight of a car and what was allowed or not allowed. And also has this New York City parking garage been evaluated by a licensed structural engineer who could then tell us, okay, we evaluated the building and here's what we think it's rated to hold. And this is the maximum weight you can have on each floor. I think you're going to see a lot of laws coming into play now going forward where the cities are going to start making older garages produce this type of data. 
contributing factor number three. This could be any potential violations that existed in the building and areas of maintenance that needed to be corrected and were they corrected? Was there any problems with the concrete or the structure? So if you pull up the record now for this property on the New York City Buildings Department, you can see right here, they've already got this notice here, full vacate exists on this property. On the lower left, you can see there's complaints, violations, and I wanna take a look at these right here. It says where there's 19 violations. These other ones, these DOB violations, those were mostly elevator related over decades. But let's take a look. So here's a list of all the violations that the building has gotten over the years, some from like 2013, going all the way back. But there's one here in 2003 that in particular catches our eye. And that's this one right here. So when you pull up the violation here, and do you see this right up here on the upper right? It says violation open. This means they have not closed the violation in terms of, at least from what the city is saying online officially. And then down here, you can see where it says amount paid. There was an $800 fine that was paid, but yet it looks like no work was done on it. But let's take a look here at what the violation was. And here it is right in the middle. Failure to maintain building hazardous noted at first floor ceiling slab. Cracks exist between, and I believe this is girders, and uh, the girders and slab possibly is what they meant to say. Spalling concrete and missing concrete covering steel beams. Note defective concrete with exposed rear cracks. So this is interesting because does this mean now that maybe it didn't cave in from the roof down? Maybe a column on the first floor, for example, might have just buckled or something like that. This is very similar to what we think happened at the Champlain Towers condo down here in Miami, Florida. So the plot thickens, folks. Now, NBC4 in New York City obtained these plans here that were submitted by the owners of the garage about work that was supposed to be done. Now, if you look at the proposed repair there, you can see it, it says that the work is supposed to be done in the presence of the engineer of records to determine the extent of repair necessary. That's how serious the engineering firm took this because they must have seen some pretty serious damage. And it looks like they saw a crack at the column there. And so... One has to wonder, was the work ever completed because the violation is still open? And this violation here from 2009, this one is probably the most damning one of all of them. Because look what it says here. Failure to main interior building and co-compliant manager. Broken and defective fire stairs at the southwest section. Rotten. Opened with loose piece of concrete. You see that right here? Loose piece of concrete in danger of falling. That says to me that's an advanced stage of spalling. Kind of like what I showed you at that Fort Lauderdale Harbor Marriott uh, Hotel Resort when I stayed there two years ago. 20 21. And remember I walked through the garage and I showed you all of the chunks of concrete that had fallen down? Look at this. This is all fresh. This just fell from up above. Looks like it just came down in a big chunk and shattered here. America? We've got a problem, and the problem is electric vehicles. Now you're probably thinking, Jeff, what the heck would electric vehicles have to do with any of this? Well, there's a problem with electric vehicles in that they're very heavy. They're much heavier than their gasoline counterparts. In fact, the NTSB is already warning people about that right now. And this brings us to contributing factor number four. Could there have been electric vehicles or just so many SUVs, which are much heavier than vehicles used to be? Could that have been a contributing factor to help bring this down? Because now you're talking about a lot more weight with these new electric vehicles. Here's the warning the NTSB gave us a couple of months ago about this. And they said they were concerned about the increased risks of severe injury and death for all road users from heavier curb weights and increasing size, power, and performance of these vehicles. And this one's really unnerving too. So many of you were probably unaware of this, but to get these 300 or more miles range out of these electric cars, the batteries have to weigh thousands of pounds. And then here they gave some examples here. Look, look at this, the Ford's F-150 Lightning EV pickup is 2,000 to 3,000 pounds heavier than the same model's gas engine. And the Mustang, the Mach-E, is 33% heavier than its gasoline counterpart. And down here is that other warning where they said, but electric vehicles are typically much heavier than even the largest trucks and SUVs that are powered by gasoline or diesel. So this could have been a contributing factor depending on how many electric vehicles there were in there. That Those add a lot of weight. Okay, so my four contributing factors here for the demise of this parking garage in New York City are, number one, the age of the building. Number two, the weight capacity 
property and any overloading there might have been. Number three, any building code violations or building maintenance or bad maintenance. And number four, the weight of any electric vehicles, SUVs, trucks, or just any of the heavier vehicles that would have been in there. What I want to do here is take a look at the Google Street View here. And here's your entrance into the garage and there's the, the building. So you basically, you have your ground floor, the second floor, the third floor and the rooftop parking. So there's four layers of above ground parking and then a cellar supposedly. And I don't know how you would get in there unless you get to it from, and you're not allowed to park your car in there. They have to park it for you. That's why they have half a dozen employees there. And you ring a bell and they come out and bring your car up. And I believe they take it up. This is the elevator here on the left. If we zoom in, do we see anything? I mean, I can't tell if these are cracks up here or if they are wires. Now here's the fire escape and I believe this was one of their violations several years back on it, which presumably they fixed it. But as we look up the building here, is there anything we see that grabs our attention? Any cracks or anything? And this is right here. You can see this the little stair stepping on the bricks. I don't know how deep that runs or how bad that is. But if we take a look at it from this side over here, see it looks like there's another crack right there on the windowsill hard to see unless you're right at it in front of it you really can't tell what's going on there but other than that I don't really see anything else that looks overtly out of place I do see this though look at this you see these bricks here they look like they're bulging out a bit I don't know if that's anything that could just be from the parapet wall that's up there well you can see no two collapses are the same each one has their own personality so anyway, thank you so much for joining us today, folks, on this video, and we will see you on the next one.